Today on Milk Street, we travel to Oaxaca. We visit Beatrice, the chef at La Cocina de Frida in the market in Ocotlan. We learn to make enchiladas verdes, as well as molletes, a simple Mexican sandwich served with pico de gallo. So stay right here with Milk Street as we learn to cook the Oaxacan way. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular's goal has been to provide wireless service that helps people communicate and connect. We offer a variety of no-contract plans and our US-based customer service team can help find one that fits you. To learn more, visit consumercellular.tv. Since 1899, my family shared our passion for everything that goes into our Mutti 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes. Only Mutti. Designed by cooks for cooks for over 100 years. Cookware collection by Regalware. Handcrafted in Wisconsin. The AccuSharp knife and tool sharpener. Designed to safely sharpen knives in seconds. AccuSharp. Keep your edge. Where is Oaxaca in Mexico and what's distinctive about it? Let's start with that. Well, Oaxaca is the southern state of Mexico, and I would say it's the beating heart of Mexican culture. We have a deep diversity of ethnic groups and languages, cultures, traditions, and we have a big party culture also. Oaxaca is very, it's all about celebrations. It's a very celebratory culture. And in terms of food, this, of course, translates into a great variety of flavors, techniques, processes, and reasons to cook for such celebrations. I would have assumed that there were two or three or four different cultural groups in Mexico, but there are dozens, right? And so, just in Oaxaca, there are how many different languages? Well, in Oaxaca, we have all over maybe 35 languages which are a lot. A lot of them are endangered, uh, others not so much, but it still is something that is getting lost. But right now we still have a lot of diversity and you also see it in, in the markets, in the streets, you can listen to many different languages. So we're here at a market about an hour outside of Oaxaca City with Beatriz and with Maria, of course, <laughs> our guide. So uh, what are we going to start with? So we're doing some uh, green enchiladas here. This is a very traditional Mexican dish. So here we have tomatillos, uh, some serrano chile, mm -hmm. garlic, onion, and we're going to fry them. And after that, uh, we'll put them in the blender with some cilantro. Okay. Pues con 20 minutos ya es suficiente. You can see that they're soft. That means they're ready to go. Enchiladas verdes. So she let it 
sit for a while and then she will put them like to in some assembly, then she let it. You wanna try? Yeah. Mm. Boy, is that good. It's a slightly sweet. Yeah, but it's got a little acidic acid. and it's uh, it's got a little heat, yeah. uh, but it's bright. Yo de lleno llevo 24 años cocinando. So she's been, Por tradición de mi madre. She's been cooking for 24 years, but this kitchen here has been going on for 80 years, so she inherited from oh. her mother. Bueno, pues aquí ya tenemos las tortillas ya remojadas, rellenas de quesillo. So the tortillas here, she put some quesillo in there and she soaked them for a little bit, not much. Mm -hmm. And then she puts them in the plate, add some more salsa, and then you add the garnish. Cilantro y cebolla. Cilantro and onion. Y and then queso. Farmer's fresh cheese. cheese. Yeah, yeah, fresh cheese. Oh man, that looks good. Y listo. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And you know the filling, she put some uh, quesillo here, some string cheese, but you can add uh, chicken, you know, a thinly sliced beef, the tasajo or chorizo on the side, mm -hmm. whatever you want to put in, maybe mushroom as well. You can play with the fillings. Mucho gusto. Ay, que bueno. Mm. All right, so Muchas good. gracias, pues aquí estamos. So I learned a few things in Oaxaca. First of all, an enchilada is just a tortilla with something in it with a sauce. So they often just put cheese in it, like I had there. So you don't have to have a fancy filling, but you can switch in anything you want. That was the first thing. Secondly, the sauce, they often char uh, tomatillos or chilies right on the hardwood charcoal. As you can see, there's no live coals here, but I promise it's gonna be really delicious still. So to get started, we are just gonna heat up a tablespoon of olive oil here. And just like you did in Oaxaca, we're gonna fry up some chili. So we have poblanos here. This is 12 ounces, so about three good sized poblanos. We have a pound of tomatillos that we just husked and chopped up. We have one chopped white onion. And then we have six garlic cloves here. And we're gonna keep those whole crisp because we want them to fry up in the oil, but we don't want them to burn. And it's just gonna take five to eight minutes over medium high heat for those to get really nice and soft and a little okay. bit of browning on them. It's been about five minutes. And these are starting to get really nice and soft. So I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of cumin. And that just takes about 30 seconds. As soon as it's nice and fragrant, we can add some chicken broth. We're gonna add a half a cup of chicken broth. Now, here's a secret. You can use water if that's all you have at home, but chicken broth adds a little bit more kind of savory depth. Okay. And then that's gonna help us finish cooking this so it's all ready to be blended into the sauce. So this just needs about five minutes, and then we'll add it to the blender and make our sauce. All right, Chris, so we took our fried up onions and peppers, and we're just gonna let that sit for five minutes and cool while we make the rest of the filling. So I have a cup and a half of finely chopped chicken here. You can absolutely use rotisserie chicken from the grocery store, which is my uh, personal favorite. Your go-to <laughs> uh, ingredient. Definite, yeah. definite go-to. You could also just poach some chicken breasts, or it's a great way to use up leftover chicken. I mean, really, that's where enchiladas came from, is sort of using up what you had. So we're just gonna combine this with about uh, two tablespoons of hot sauce. Use a little less if it's not your thing and six ounces of shredded mozzarella. And we do use whole milk mozzarella here, Chris. There's not a ton, and these are really kind of lighter, brighter enchiladas, but you really want the richness from that whole milk. All right, and we have a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt and a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, so let's finish up the sauce. I'm gonna blend this for about one minute until it's pretty smooth. So now I'm gonna add a cup of loosely packed cilantro. And you just wanna blend that for a minute or until you see that the cilantro is really well incorporated. It's really fresh and bright. So we're gonna start by putting a cup of this sauce. Thank you, teamwork. I don't want that to fall out of your hand and I wouldn't be too I good. knew we had you here for a reason. See? 
So a cup of that is gonna, actually, Chris, while you're at it, this is just a nine by 13 baking dish. Would you mind pouring that cup just straight down the middle of the pan? So you can see we have about a cup left of this and we're gonna add it in two parts. So now we get to heat up our tortillas. Now this is a really simple but really important part of the recipe. I will admit I skipped it once and it's a disaster. The tortillas just break everywhere and they don't get nice and pliable, so don't skip it. So what we're gonna do is we have two tablespoons of olive oil here. And I'm just gonna brush the tortillas with oil on both sides. And then we stick these in a 475 degree oven, so the same oven that you're gonna be cooking your enchiladas in, but just for three minutes. We cover them with foil, it's totally fine if the tortillas are overlapping a little bit, and you leave them in there for just three minutes. And this just makes them pliable? Exactly, so they soften, they absorb a little bit of that oil, almost steam a little bit, so they're really easy to roll. Now you don't wanna leave them in there for too long, because if you do, then they can get a little bit dried out and brittle. So now I'm just gonna cover it and stick them in the oven. All right, Chris, so you can see these are really nice and soft and workable now. So you just wanna work on your clean countertop or a cutting board here. And to fill this, it's so tempting to overfill them. So I actually force myself to measure out so that I don't get stuck with some sad tortillas at the end with no filling. So you want about three tablespoons of this mixture. And then you wanna roll it up pretty tightly. And it's sort of like the first pancake. The first one's all, always kind of the ugliest. And then right on top, seam side down, of course, so that it all stays together. And you wanna kind of scooch all the filling right down to the bottom. Okay. All right, and there's the last one. So I'm gonna take our remaining sauce, Chris. I'm gonna pour about a half a cup over the top here. So I'm just gonna cover this with foil. And these are gonna go into that 475 degree oven for about 15 minutes. So when these came out of the oven, I actually added another half cup of that sauce and covered it with foil. And that just helps it steam a little bit more and heat up that extra sauce, but you still have that nice freshness um, instead of you know the cook sauce, which we already had on there. Okay. And then we saved a little extra to add at the end. Mm. Thank you. Add a little extra here. And I always like a little bit of extra lime. The tomatillos already have quite a bit of nice acidity, but that lime is really nice. You know, it's it's really bright and fresh. There's a little bit of heat, but it's um. This, sometimes you get it. It feels like. Uh, a bad lasagna, like it's just so heavy. This is really light, it's good. Yeah, I like the spice and I like that we don't add a ton of cheese or anything on at the end, so they all kind of stay neat and fresh and really bright, like you said. So light, fresh, uh, great tomatillo sauce. You can use lots of different things. Instead of cheese, we use chicken and a little bit of cheese. The tortilla we softened up in the oven and made a very simple tomatillo chili sauce. It actually goes right into the blender after just cooking for a few minutes. Bright flavors, very fresh. Uh, it's the Oaxacan way. Some mo molletes. Well, it's a very basic for children's parties, for posadas, for all these little social gatherings we have in neighborhoods. What's a posada? Birthday. A posada is a party we have before Christmas. I bet you have 365 different social gatherings a year. Yeah, actually. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we use this because it's quick, 
It's something that, you know, everyone can eat. So you know? it's just bread, Starman? In Mexico, we call it bolillo. It's a bread that it has a very hard crust. It's, it's full of dough. And you use this for a torta too? It's si. the same bread? It's the same bread. The sandwich? What we like from bolillo is the crust. Parada. So she's adding some bean paste that it's being pre Hierba de conejo. prepared. We add the pico de gallo here. Chile. Ponemos queso. Some fresh cheese. Oh, man. <laughs> this is our version of the toast here. <laughs> That bread is really crispy, but it's it's not heavy inside. It's very light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is so good. You can turn off the camera now. I'm just going to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when I travel, sometimes you come across something you don't expect. And we stayed at this little hotel in Oaxaca City, and they had great breakfast, and one of them was the molletes. Now, unlike what we just saw, it was a little different. It had toasted bread. It wasn't the roll. Uh, it had the black beans, of course. Then it had the melted uh, quesillo cheese, sort of like mozzarella, and the pico de gallo was on top. Just fabulous breakfast. So we're going to do that version now. So we're going to make the toppings first before we toast the bread and start assembling. And the first thing we're going to make is a fresh tomato salsa called pico de gallo. And it gives a, just a bright taste and color to the top of the, uh, the mollete. The reason we use these and prefer to use these is because the flavor is more consistent, especially in the cold winter months. Okay, so I'm going to give them a cross cut like this, just two or three cuts, and then go back and do a rough chop. They don't have to be perfect or evenly sized at all. The thing about pico de gallo is you don't want to make it too far ahead, certainly not a day ahead. You want to make it the day of that you're going to so use it. So it gets it. very watery? Yes. Oddly enough, the flavor will actually get muddy and a little less intense. Hmm. Okay, so these are done. The whole pint becomes more than that when you're chopped. And as you can see, it's pretty rough chopped. Okay, now we only need about a quarter of a red onion. We don't want too much onion in the pico de gallo. It's just enough to add a little bit of flavor. So I'm going to prep it for chopping making these vertical cuts and about, about a quarter inch maybe if that's the size of dice you want and then I'm going to cut through crosswise and I'm going to stop about halfway through because we only need a quarter onion. So that's the base. We'll add a quarter cup of chopped cilantro. This is half a jalapeno, seeds removed. Two teaspoons of vinegar which is what gives it that little bright taste. Teaspoon and a half of olive oil and a teaspoon of salt. And we'll just give that a quick stir. And this is it, mm -hmm. raw salsa. So this needs to sit for about 10 minutes or so to let the flavors uh, meld together and develop and while we make the uh, black bean puree. Okay. Okay. We're going to have two cans of black beans. So we're going to let those sit and drain for a couple of minutes. We're going to drain off some of this liquid and use it in the puree. And now while that drains, we'll toast the spices. We have a tablespoon each of coriander and cumin. We'll put those in together. We're going to let these toast for about a minute until they, we start to smell them, get a little uh, fragrant. While those are toasting, I am going to take these drained black beans, set them aside, and then we're going to measure a quarter cup. Good. Let's see how these are. This, of course, you want to keep a good eye on because we know what happens. Because it burns in about 10 seconds if yes. you're not careful. I think we're good here. And toasting, obviously, just brings out the flavor. It re releases the oils in the spice, and it just gives it a little bit of an extra dimension. So put it directly into the food processor, which will cool it down also. We'll take our beans that we've drained. Okay. Our quarter cup of liquid. So we're going to add a little heat with two chipotle chilies in adobo sauce and two teaspoons of the adobo sauce from those chilies, two tablespoons of lime juice to give it that little bit of sharpness, which is nice, and a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon. I feel like I'm in an operating theater. <laughs> just, just call me nurse. <laughs> Operation. Okay. Now we're going to fold in, at the very end, some chopped cilantro. You know, 
I like that this makes a good amount of the bean puree because you're going to want to have this the next day for something else. We prefer to stir freshly chopped herbs in after the processor rather than putting them into the processor because this it preserves their flavor a little bit better. And we just added a half a cup of cilantro. Okay, we're ready to make the mollettes. So Chris, when you had the mollette in Oaxaca, you had it on a roll called a bolillo. We're opting to use supermarket bakery bread sliced a half inch thick. It has a soft interior. And to get that crustiness as well, we're going to toast it under the broiler. So we've got the broiler preheating. We're gonna lay the bread out on a piece of foil that's been lightly sprayed. We're going to brush it with a little bit of olive oil. It helps it get extra toasty. And then we're gonna sprinkle with a little salt and pepper. We're adding flavor at every stage of this recipe. So these are gonna go under the broiler till they're nice golden toasted brown. We are going to do about three to five minutes on the first side, then flip them over and another one or two minutes on the second side. You know, every broil is different obviously, so you wanna watch them carefully so they don't burn. So our toast is toasty. <laughs> we flipped it back over so the oil side is up, the seasoned side, and we're gonna add about a quarter cup of puree to each slice. Now this is not a little uh, precious bruschetta with just a little bit of toppings. We're gonna have a, a massive amount of topping here, right? I mean, it's like cheese toast, but with this delicious black beans under it. It's not massive. It's substantial. <laughs> okay, all right, it's substantial. Would you mind? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Like you said, you had this for breakfast in the hotel. You also could have it for lunch, like you did in the market. You can have it for an afternoon snack after school or just because you're hungry. I mean, this, this is the type of thing that is an everyday dish in Oaxaca. Rather than having the Oaxacan cheese, which is hard to find, we're gonna use shredded mozzarella because it's a very similar type of cheese. And like you said, massive amounts of cheese on each toast. We have a pound of mozzarella here and we're gonna divide it equally between the eight toasts. So that's about two ounces per slice. We're gonna let this go back in the broiler for about four to six minutes until it gets melty and toasty. Okay. D I just need to say, this is the <laughs> messiest, most beautiful food we've produced at Milk Street in two years. Okay, so while the cheese is warm, fresh cilantro sprinkled over. All right. Oh, God, these are fun. All right. Now, the pico de gallo, we transferred to a serving bowl and we did it with a slotted spoon to take out a little bit of that extra liquid because as it sits, it uh, does accumulate. Really, a fork? Well, yeah, yeah, you can do what you want. I learned it this way from you. Mm. Mm. I mean, the, the beans are amazing and of course, melted cheese, but the pico de gallo just gives it that extra layer of punchy brightness and it just brightens the whole flavor. Okay, now you embarrass me. <laughs> Here we go. There, uh, this may be my favorite thing I've ever had <clears throat> in one of these trips. It's just so... Really? Well, wow. beans, cheese, you know, toasted bread and, and a salsa. Mm. So, molletes, you can use the bread they use for the typical torta, the Mexican sandwiches, or you can use really any kind of bread. Make sure it's toasted nicely. A little bit of salt and oil and pepper on top. And then the black bean, we use canned beans. And then of course the mozzarella or the quesillo, which is very similar. And the pico de gallo with salsa on top. Very simple ingredients, really four things and absolutely delicious. You can get this recipe, all the recipes from this season of Milk Street at MilkStreetTV.com. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular has been offering no contract wireless plans designed to help people do more of what they like. Our U.S.-based customer service team can help find a plan that fits you. To learn more, visit ConsumerCellular.tv. Since 1899, my family shared our passion for 
everything that goes into our Mutti 100% Italian tomatoes. Only tomatoes, only Mutti. Designed by cooks for cooks for over 100 years. Cookware collection by Regalware, handcrafted in Wisconsin. The AccuSharp knife and tool sharpener, designed to safely sharpen knives in seconds. AccuSharp, keep your edge.